All right, so this should be very similar to the last one for the x-axis. This is again going to be time that we're measuring in minutes. So one revolution is done at 30, which means two is done at 60. So halfway is going to be 15, and then I get 7.5 there, and 22.5. Halfway is 45, which gives me 37.5. All right, now what did you guys come up with the heights? Um, What's our max? 550. So I'm going to put 550 clear up there. What was the diameter of this? 520. 520, so what that means is that how far off the ground is this? 30 feet. 30 feet. Which makes sense because we have to have space for that little ball to be. Well, uh, one thing that's cool too, I, just for fun, the ball, see, if you get on it like that, Technically, when you get to the top, you'd be upside down, right? Mm -hmm. So what it has on it is th those two bars, they actually shift as you go. So it's always keeping you uh, centered. So basically, by the time you go around, it's you basically rotated a full like a circle. Gyro ball? And you didn't even know you did. So it's interesting. Like a gyro ball? Yeah. OK, now let's go to um, actually pl plotting some points here. Who can tell me how they got the midline? Uh, you add them together and then you divide it. And what did you get? Two. You guys I agree with 280? Oh, no, it's 290. Sorry, not 280. Yeah, because it would add to 580, so half of 580 is 290. And that works because if our diameter is 520, half of that it should be 260. Yeah. Is there a difference of 260 between the midline and the minimum? Yeah. Is this 260? Yeah. And what about from the minimum to the, or the maximum to the midline? We also have 260 there. So if we're going to plot our points here, we get on, then we get halfway up there, and then we get all the way up there, halfway down, and then, that was so fun, let's do it again. So then at 37.5, we're halfway up, 45, we're at the top. 52.5, we're on the way down, and 60, we're done. Yes, question? Um, could you also do the centimeters for the last one and make this negative? Which yep, so when we write the equation, let's do that both ways. Let's do a sine and let's do a cosine. Um, I'm used to doing it the sine way, but I think I'm starting to like the cosine way a little bit better. Okay, before I do it, do you have any questions on how we graph that? If so, can you stop me? Let's plug the pieces together. What is A going to be? What is the amplitude? 260. 260, that's how much it's going up or down from the midline. And another way to think about it, that's the radius. Because whatever the radius is, that's going to be the amplitude. What is B going to be? 550. That's not changing because our period is still 30, right? So that's what we saw in the London I. It's going to also be here for the high roller because that's pi over 50. What is our midline? 290. I kind of skipped. And then, just like on the last one, if we wanted this to be a sine wave, I'm going to trace it. Sine starts right at its midline, right? Usually, this point right here, it starts at 0, 0. Well, we shifted it up 290. How much did we have to shift it to the right? 7.5. That one is also going to be the same, okay? So let's write that in there, 7.5. So when I write this equation, it's going to look like this. Y is equal to, what was the first one, guys? Help me there. 260. 260. Sign. Parentheses, 50, 550. be how we write it with sine, which basically we had all that data, we just had to write it down. If I wanted to turn this into cosine, I would make two changes. What would be the changes? You would remove the shift. I don't need to shift it anymore. Okay. And you would change from sine to cosine. Uh-huh, but cosine starts at its maximum. 
And we want to be at the minimum, so what do we have to do? Flip it with the negative. So it'd be negative 260 cosine 5 fifteenths times x plus 290. Did you write it twice? What do you mean? When you wrote it, you did it twice. Oh, no, we just did it once. Wow. Because, yeah, I mean, it's cool, but it's a half hour. And it's like, yeah. we got other things to do. And plus, we had my kids on it. So it was like, they were done. You know, they were just little toddlers. They were like, yeah, let's do something else. You allowed your toddlers out of the car? I'm I like sure did. 16 not even allowed in the car in Vegas yet. <laughs> we go park near the fountain. Mom's like, watch it. Watch the fountain. <laughs> if you get out of the car, I'll know. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny. All right. Now, what we're going to do, guys. Oh, could, how would we check our graphs to make sure they're good? Desmos. What we're going to do right now is you are actually going to do a partner activity where we're going to do something like what we just did, but in a different context. Instead of Ferris wheels, we're going to talk about average temperature. This is a city's average low temperature over a year. Notice in January it's really cold, and then it starts getting warmer in the summer, and then it drops down. What is that making? A sine. A sine wave. It's not perfect, right? But could we model a sine wave and then make predictions about it based off that? Yes. If we had linear seasons in Utah. Yes. This is Utah. Now, what we're going to do here, let me show you how to do this. So basically what I'm going to do is you're going to choose a buddy. And I'm going to give each buddy a different city, and it's going to list the month and the average low temperature. So you're going to start with a blank piece of graph paper. You're going to draw on an X and Y axis, just like this, and you're going to place the dots. And you're going to make this dot plot here, just like that. Then what we're going to do is kind of come up with an equation that models what's going on here. I'm going to show you how I would do this if I were you, and then you're going to do it on your own. What if I would city had a heat wave, an outlier? And it's true that might mess things up. That's why it's an average monthly temperature. Like By taking the average, it kind of uh, makes it so those outliers don't have the biggest impact. I don't have a random 290 degrees on my graph where everyone died <laughs> from yeah, a fire. Yeah, hopefully now, here's what I would do. I would start by identifying the maximum, and then identifying the minimum. So guys, looking at our dots on there, what does it look like the maximum point was? 75. Yeah, I'd say about 75, right? What? It's 65. Oh, you are absolutely oh, right. Oh, yeah, 65. 65. Now, what about the minimum point? I, would, I don't know about you. 22. But I'm thinking 22. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right. Now, I know the max, I know the min. The next step would be to come up with the midline. Remember, to get the midline, you just average them. So I'm going to add 65 and 22, and that gives me 87. And I'm going to divide that by 2, and I believe that gives me 43.5. Not a pretty number, but whatever. Oh, I don't like not pretty numbers. So 43.5, I'm going to say, is right about here. That is our midline. Well, now, since I know my midline is 43.5, can I figure out what the amplitude is? Yeah, that's just going to be the distance between those two, which should match the distance between those two. Okay, now, next thing would be how do you figure out the period? I'm not going to give you all the details here, but I want you to think, if we're talking about seasons, how long does it take to go through a cycle? Four months. What? I'm not saying, if we're talking about all four seasons, not just one season, all four seasons, how long does it take months. to go through a cycle? Twelve months, a year. Would we agree with that? Wait. So it's three months a year. Three months a season. Well, that's trash. I've never seen a three-month-long season. We're in Utah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, I want you to think about it like this. When we were doing 30-minute rides, we replaced P with 30. On this one, you're going to replace it with 12, and then solve for B. I'm going to leave it there. So we're only uh, one. Also, the other thing is, on your, on, your, on your paper, it's going to give you about 15 points of data. It gives you some extras, but that doesn't change the length of a cycle. It's still 12. So don't put in 2 pi over 15, no, do 2 pi 12. over 12. 
Yeah, don't do that. Okay, last but not least, if you're going to do a cosine, then you're done. You just flip it. If you're like, how do we come up with the phase shift? Well, what I'm going to do is say, where does this cross the never. midline? I'd say about right there. Never, it never does. And remember, our point for sine starts there, and we shift it up to the midline. Four. I just need to say, how much do I need to shift it to the right to make it be a sine wave? Four. And whatever that point is, Three. guesstimate a little Four. bit. That'll be what it is. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys about 15 minutes to come up with this, and then we'll present.